right guys, we are getting down to the uh, deadline for this project. We're gonna lose the shop! We're gonna lose the shop! But we're not panicking here at the Nivelac 57 YouTube channel. What are we gonna do? I'm very confident that we will get this car done in time. But let's get you in here close and show you guys what we got done since the last time you saw the car. guys since the last time you saw this car we had basically just gotten the engine installed and since then we've gotten quite a bit of work done as you can see here we uh, worked on our downpipe um, it's a little bit tight here around the firewall we had to uh, use a very tight radius bend to get it down and out the side of the car I'm pretty happy with how that all came out also, we got our charge pipe done. We are going with no intercooler on this car. Um, a lot of people have asked about that. And I'm pretty confident that we should be able to make a decent amount of power in spite of that. Also, you'll see that we got our radiator installed. Uh, I bought this thing at a flea market and we basically tried to get the largest radiator into the car as possible as any drag and drive car should uh, that's how you should build it also we got ourselves a pretty nicely sized transmission cooler again that was about the largest piece that we could fit into the hole from here we worked on getting the intake finished up and final installed I added some ports here in the back for the MAP sensor, the manifold pressure signal for the MAX ECU, and also my blow-off valve. Also, I added our manifold air temperature sensor. And the idea with this intake is to one day add some ports here on the sides for methanol injection. And we will add that as sort of our intercooler for when we want to really turn up the boost. As you can see here in the front, there is not a lot of space here for an intercooler, and I really don't like the idea of running a air to water intercooler because a lot of classes prohibit it, and also it crowds the passenger compartment. Other things that we wrapped up is we got the brakes fully functional. This is a brake master cylinder off of like a third gen Camaro. And we also installed a brake pressure sensor. This is a zero to 3000 PSI sensor from low dollar motorsports. And we are going to use that basically as an input to our max ECU and that will actually activate our brake lights and our two-step rev limiter. And all of the fuel and everything like that has all been plumbed. Also, we have our coils from our good friends at Firepower Race Coils installed. And if you guys have been following the live streams, we actually got this thing running very recently. I think this thing sounds absolutely fantastic. 
and we also have started working on some of the uh, street stuff such as uh, we have ourselves a horn and this will be the plug to run all of the lights on the front end so that we can remove the front end for when we need to work on it. As I mentioned earlier, we also worked on getting all of the fuel system stuff plumbed up and ready to go. And basically how we are setting the system up is there will be two fuel tanks in the car. This is our race tank. And then underneath the floor here, we have a tank from a 56 Chevy. And we will basically have two fuel systems, but they will Y into one. And depending on what we are doing, um, it will uh, sort of select between the two. So basically where the magic happens with this system is we have this little valve here. It's just a three-way valve and it basically, the fuel either goes straight through to this side or it gets diverted down to the bottom line. Also, I have a linear position sensor um, often used for like shock height and that sort of thing here and that will uh, tell the computer what position this valve is in. Now we have S and R here, that stands for street and race. And this is where the microphone on my camera died. Basically what that valve does is it will redirect the return into the street tank or the race tank. And depending on where the position of that valve is, it will either turn on the race or the street fuel pumps. And it will basically select which system to use. So all you have to do when you get to the track is literally flip that valve to the race position and you are ready to rock. Moving on to inside of the car, there has been quite a bit of work going on inside of here. You'll notice that we have not one, but two ECUs in the car. On the bottom, we have a Mega Squirt Gold Box that will be in charge of controlling the fuel and spark, as well as a few uh, auxiliary functions such as fans and that sort of thing. And then the Max ECU Mini on top will basically do all of the heavy lifting. So essentially I've piggybacked my standalone ECU and the reason that I've done this is because I've had issues with the Mega Squirt 3 software and getting the full range of variable valve timing with it and I've had much better luck with the Max ECU stuff so the Max ECU will control the variable valve timing, it will manage the fuel pumps, it will uh, take in the brake pressure data and kick on the two-step which will be uh, managed through the gold box as well as turn on the brake lights. Someday it may actually control our second set of injectors and that's about it. What is neat with this system and I'd actually like to make a dedicated video to this is both of these ECUs are capable of talking over uh, what is called CAN. If you guys aren't familiar with that, that is the communication protocol that is used in uh, all modern vehicles. And basically how that works is it is able to uh, sort of send data between this box and another box. But we'll go over that more in its own dedicated video. From here, I worked on getting the dash back into the car. I'm pretty happy with how this all came out. Um, I bought a original dash pad and I clearanced it around the cage. I'm super happy with how it came out. Also, it's a street car, so you gotta have a fuel gauge. Also, we installed ourselves a uh, super fancy precision performance products shifter. Dad also worked on the seat mounts that you can see here. We have quite a bit of stuff we have to get done in the next seven days. And it's really going to be uh, quite the hustle to get everything done. Yeah.